thank you, thank you for um, making it this, uh, this far. Uh, this is the last lightning talk. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Shravan Achar. Uh, I'm an engineer at Apple. I work on Jupyter Notebooks. Um, in this talk, I tried to identify some unique characteristics uh, and resource requirements for um, AI ML development where interactivity is desired uh, and talk about some optimizations for those interactive workloads. Uh, when you want to support a team of engineers uh, doing exploration. So ML lifecycle can be complex. Um, you know, it involves various computationally intensive stages before any value could be de derived out of the models. It doesn't end there. Uh, many more stages becomes more complex quickly. It can be slow and repetitive. Uh, so a faster iteration process is necessary. So for a faster iteration, um, you need resources quick and fast, and that can include GPUs as well. So um, for, for that faster iteration loop, you need to have an interactive session, interactive interface for exploration, experimentation, prototyping, uh, and a collaborative environment uh, to have, for example, a, a fast feedback loop uh, with peers to complement the iteration loop. So uh, just a sample stack uh, you know, involves like using Jupyter. Jupyter fulfills the interactivity part of this. Uh, you can hook in different plug, different uh, productivity tools. For example, um, there's a popular Git extension that can be used to get version control. Uh, we are working on standardizing uh, sharing interfaces. It's also possible to collaborate in real time on a notebook. Uh, but even with all these collaboration tools, uh, the resource side of the story is, is not really fully defined. Um, rest of the stack, Spark and Kubeflow, no introduction needed. Um, capabilities aside, they also have well-maintained operators on Kubernetes. Um, this can be replaced uh, with any other compute engines, like Ray, for example, so it doesn't, wouldn't matter for, uh, for the overall objective. Um, importance of a resource scheduler uh, for efficiency has not been understated in this forum. Um, uh, Apache Unicorn is one such uh, cloud-native scheduler. Uh, that replaces the Kubernetes native scheduler, but can handle both data ML workloads. Um, a side benefit of that is uh, that if you're coming from data processing systems from Hadoop, Yarn world, uh, you get to keep large parts of the compute stack when transitioning to a machine learning platform on Kubernetes. Um, additionally, it has enough controls to satisfy requirements uh, for interactive or online kind of workloads. But uh, it can be replaced with any other scheduler um, supporting similar features, so it's not really tied to Unicorn in general. So many different optimizations are possible uh, for these kind of workloads. Um, optimizations can be categorized into three useful buckets, application layer, scheduling layer, infrastructure layer. Um, we can see how these fit into different stages of ML lifecycle where interactive experience uh, play a key role. So data preparation stage uh, here exhibits similar characteristics as interactive Spark environments where possibly most of us are familiar with already, where workload elasticity, uh, or work, workload elasticity or like dynamic allocation uh, complements uh, scheduling features as fair sharing, quota borrowing, and infrastructure features such as auto scaling and downscaling uh, to improve um, utilization and minimize idle resources at scale. So the resource guarantees part, the, those, those quick and fast resources part uh, can be provided by carving out a portion of the compute pool dedicated for interactive use cases. Uh, this idea basically involves um, oversubscription, so it has to be done responsibly with enough data. Um, so in this example, say 100 cores, um, memory not shown here for simplicity, are set aside for interactive use cases. They're granted only when the user is online and the user goes offline, they're given back to the parent pool. Each user also gets minimum resources to get started, so uh, this can kind of fulfill the interactivity or quick start requirement for that user, and can only scale up when the cluster has idle resources available. Um, for model training, additionally, on top of all the optimizations we discussed before, you, you, you get you, um, things like gang scheduling can help with optimizing GPU waste, especially in the context of uh, um, in-cluster distributed training. Um, and the guarantee resources granted the same as before. Uh, now, additionally, GPUs are also made available uh, for interactive use cases. Um, if users go idle, um, GPUs are given back. 
uh, when users come online, scheduler will employ preemption to meet minimum guarantees for that user. Um, some GPU sharing strategies can potentially be used as I learned uh, today in this uh, session, uh, in, in sessions today. Uh, so potentially uh, full dedicated GPUs are probably not necessary. Of course, this only works if it's uh, limited to exploration, experimentation, prototyping aspects of, of development workflow. Uh, large scale training would have different requirements on the platform. Um, so uh, model inference is uh, counterintuitively, even though a production use case uh, is also an area where Jupyter can play a key role. Um, um, you know, notebooks can help pre-process clean data before it's loaded into Spark, for example, and do prediction in batches. Uh, additionally, Jupyter can be used to build batch inference pipelines to automate batch prediction, uh, you know, for example, integrating with Airflow. Um, and uh, other optimizations like preemption uh, has been shown to uh, improve GPU utilization for in the context of, pre in, in the context of inference. Uh, in the context of inference, uh, that's another area of optimization that can be leveraged. Resource guarantees for such pipeline development, we can contain the same idea of oversubscription, uh, either carve out guaranteed capacity for development of such pipelines uh, or let users develop using their um, dedicated queues. Of course, this assumes that jobs or workloads uh, that are preemptible are also fault tolerant. Um, you know, so, so some training jobs could completely pause or fail altogether. So it's important to define SLAs accordingly. So just to summarize, Jupyter-based workloads which bring interactive experience to end users require stronger resource commitments that uh, hasn't been uh, looked into uh, in, in very detail. This includes GPUs. So playing with the ideas of resource reservations and oversubscription, um, resource guarantees for these workloads can be satisfied without increasing the cost. So additional optimizations can be layered across scheduling and infra components uh, to achieve cost savings uh, when supporting a large team um, do, doing various such exploratory activities. So if you're interested in uh, this area of interactive workloads, you can check out these two talks, uh, which, which talk about um, um, airflow integration and, and see how you can do machine uh, ML training with Jupyter. Um, so for any questions on specifics uh, or other feedback, please reach out. Uh, that's the end of my talk. Thank you.